Uh, have you guys ever been excited about the latest and greatest thing that you were wanting to buy? I know girls are really good at this. You guys are hunters. You guys will find this purse and you guys will hunt. And as soon as the for sale sign go, I mean sale sign, this is when you guys hit, you know, because you can't just buy it for the regular price, you know. But, you know, when you get the thing, your shoes or purse, whatever, you, you know, you get the feeling that you want to share with everybody, you know. Man, it's just like want to tell everybody, I mean, I got these new, you know, stuff. But, you know, I, I had this story about six months ago. Um, I was sitting in uh, Barnes & Noble, reading magazine, uh, just drinking coffee. And I, saw, I took this uh, car magazine, just flipping through it, you know. And there's like, I saw this picture of this car. I was like, oh, my Lanta, you know, this is like the, the most amazing car. I was like, man, I need to get this car, you know. So I called my brother. <laughs> my brother was actually in Africa. So I Skyped him, like, I sent him the picture of the car. I'm like, hey, this is the car I'm going to get, you know. I'm like, check it out. Let me know what you think. <laughs> He's like, okay, give me 24 hours. So he calls me back. He's like, dude, bad deal. Don't get it. <laughs> so, and me, you know, being younger brother, obedient, I call Mercedes. I'm like, I want it. <laughs> Well, the thing is, this was like 2013 summer. The car is a 2014. doesn't come out till like six months. I was like, I don't care. Pre-order it. Get it. I'm buying it, you know. So and it was a period where I had to wait for like about four or five months to get my car. And you have no idea how much I wanted to share with people. I mean, I was like, I was keeping the secret. You know, car has to come from Germany, you know, on the ship. I'm like, what if ship sinks? Hello, people. Titanic <laughs> happened, you know? It's like, I don't want to tell people the car is coming, you know, and the car doesn't show up. So, but I remember when the car came, man, I was uh, so excited, man. I told everybody, I was like, man, I got a car, you know, that's it. I mean, you know, the four days are over, you know? Fix and repair daily, you know, grandma's car. Anyways, I remember I was sharing, you know, and it kills, uh, kills me. Sometimes I don't get it that, you know, us Christians... We have the most important relationship in the world. And why that we sometimes hold back sharing? You know, statistics says that one out of ten Christians share their faith, you know. That um, we just hold back. And I believe the reason why, because there's a devil and demons. And he knows the moment you go out there and you invite people to church, the things will start happening, you know. And the one number, number one lie, I believe that, People believe that, you know, people don't want to hear about Jesus or faith or spirituality. And statistics says that 62% of people actually believe in God and they believe in the higher power or whatever. And actually 8 out of 10 people that the people they interview and talk to, they're actually open to hear about God and about spirituality. So this is the lie the devil wants to... You believe that, you know, don't talk about your faith. This is something personal. That's something you keep in the four walls of a church. But this is a lie and we need to... Break the lie. And the second lie is this, that sharing your faith and talking to people, inviting people to church, only reserved for the super spiritual. Or those people that are outgoing, that like to talk a lot, never shut up, you know. The thing is this, the truth is this, that you don't have to be Billy Graham or Bet, uh, Bet Moore or Britney Still. <laughs> the thing is this, all of us, God created us, unique in different ways that we can all share God's love in different ways, you know. And the thing is this, the mistake we make, we always think it's about us, it's about the messenger. But I got a news for you, it's always about the message. You have no power when you share, the message has the power. So relax, pressure's off. What do you do? You just open your mouth, talk to your friends, and invite them, amen? So I encourage you, next week, Wednesday, we do this thing called Miracle catch, sorry, slip. <laughs> yeah, every month we do this thing, miracle, miracle catch, where we go and we just invite our friends. It, it's a service meant for unbelievers. We invite our friends and it's like, hey, come check it out. How do you do it? It's simple, you know, you don't have to be super spiritual. Fridays all, happens all the time. Friday at work, five o'clock hits, I walk out of the door and I always get this question, hey, Naz, what's your plans for the weekend? I could say, uh, nothing, just watch football, or I can actually say the truth. Hey, I go to church, you know. <laughs> you should check, come check it out. What do you do on the weekends? You know, and people, you always, you know, sometimes we're just not being obedient 
and we just want to do our part. You know, people ask us all the time these questions. Hey, how's your weekend? What you do? And we just brush it off. But these are the opportunities that we can share our faith. So I just encourage you, don't fall for the lies of Satan. You know, that you have to be some kind of special, super spiritual, or people that want to hear it. People are hurting, and people need, and they're looking for answers, and you are the answer. Amen? So I encourage you, next Wednesday, talk to your friends. Bring one person. Amen?